In this video, we're going to show you how to rebuild jack shafts for casing or soul snowblowers using our custom kits as well as OEM kits available at casingersoultractors.com. So now we're going to do our jack shaft rebuild kit, how to disassemble and reassemble it. The disassemble is going to be very quick and straightforward. And if you guys want to go through the steps of trying to pull this apart, you're more than welcome. You might get aggravated because we didn't, but I'll tell you what nine times out of ten you destroy this pulley trying to pull it if it does even come off the factory oem pulley you get the roll pin out you're doing good that's fine getting the pulley off one piece good luck usually it gets destroyed or it just doesn't go if you do happen to hit a home run with this and you feel like a hero you get the pulley off you go to take your bearings out and usually they don't move off the shaft so your bearing here and your bearing there usually or stock especially this one so you can go through all the trouble of pulling this pulley to have these two bearings hold you up i don't know about you my time is worth something as much as it sucks and these oem jack shafts are not cheap uh, we do offer a, an aftermarket kit we build in the shop it's much more affordable but regardless most times you're not going to save the shaft if your sprocket's worn down it's welded to the shaft so still all that effort's no good if you want to sit there and grind and try to clean it up and put another sprocket on, again, what's your time worth? So we recommend just cutting them, and usually you'll get everything out, and it uh, tends to work all right. We're going to pull the bearings, loosen everything up, and then we'll go from there. So you can disassemble your chain. You can back the adjustment off, however you want to do it. Do both. If you're replacing your chain, obviously, then that makes sense, too. I'm going to back this adjuster out. Start it by hand just to make sure. Sometimes these are frozen and you'll destroy this and these are no longer available. Uh, we are working on a solution. But this one actually spins. It's taking both nuts, but that's fine. This is your adjuster for your chain, chain sprocket tensioner. That's 9 16 These are half inch. The carriage bolts on the back so if it's spinning make sure you can get in here pushing your carriage bolt so you'll see how this works this slides into your carriage bolt and then allows you to move this jack shaft and bearing forward or back for tension and this one has had some serious wear on it but either way so there we go Same here. And now we're going to take the chain off. Oh, find your master link. Sometimes they'll have cotter pins, sometimes they'll have these clip on links. Whoever put this on wasn't doing me any favors normally. When you do it, try to put it where you can access it nicely. This one really couldn't get much tighter to here. We're going to put a new chain on and new links. So this is not the right way to get this clip out of here, but since we don't have a lot of room, that's the way we're doing it. Sometimes these come right off, other times if they're rusted, you may have to clean up all these pins. We have a full video on how to replace the auger bearings and you set your chain. Well, we're set up for a 400 or 200 series. We'll show you on the newer style, but it's very similar. This is how we usually pull these out. Is you can use a grinder, you can use a sawzall, you can use torches. We do torches often. Uh, not everybody's got torches, so we're gonna try that we'll be safe so obviously we're not reusing this 
somebody will say okay you can sleeve and weld it if you want to go ahead again if you don't sleeve this thing perfectly true you're going to wear your chain faster you're going to weld your or your pulleys faster you're going to wear your belt faster if it's not everything's not set up perfectly true so again that's up to you we're going to throw this in the garbage scrap pile I'm not going to try pulling that pulley off. So at this point, we got two options. You can either cut this or can cut the shaft again. This is why we include new clamshells if you need them. Instead of cutting the shaft a second time, I just cut this and we're going to pull, pull it out through here. On some models, you can cut uh, behind the pulley on the other side. There's some room. Uh, a lot of models there's not. You can cut it twice if you want, but again, just make sure you cut closer to the uh, pulley. That way you can pull the pulley out just like that. If you cut that towards the other end, it's going to be too long. You're going to have to cut it again. That's all rounded out. That wasn't coming out. And you go look at this thing. You want to try putting a puller on there and deal with the rest. Go for it. So when you're cutting it, if you can't get that bearing off, you only have so much clearance in here. So that's why I cut it closer to this end than, than this end. If you can get that bearing to slide on the shaft. And, and you can pull and wiggle this out there. Okay, so this is our jack shaft bearing kit that comes with our jack shafts. You can also purchase a bearing kit separately. So even though this is a 400 or 200 series blower, it's a very late model one. So we're not gonna have to do any opening or grinding on this. I think everything's gonna fit as it should. But this is, this is the template, the instructions are in there. And this is not a gasket, it's not a spacer, it's just a template. And what you would do normally is you're going to put your carriage bolts in here, bolt them up, and then just trace the inside here. And you just need to grind or cut out a tiny little bit to match the inside diameter of this, this template so your bearing clamshells will fit in the hole. On the older ones, there's a little bit of material in here because the bearing clamshells were different. The setup was different. Um, so you just got to take a slight material out of here. Uh, some guys will just trace it out and just follow your tracing and go that route. You can leave the, uh, the template on there if you want and just kind of grind or, or file out until you hit it. That's completely up to you. But that, that's the only point. It's some years and some models you have to do that. And uh, it's going to be earlier uh, blowers for the 200 and 400 series. The 3000, 4000 uh, don't need it, nor do the later blowers for the 200, 400 series. So you're going to have your clamshells and your bearings and your locking collars. Okay, so take your bearings, sandwich into the clamshell. Don't forget your adjusters going on the back side of the clamshell. The, the clamshells or the flangettes sit flush against this. Take your new hardware we provide. Make sure the square of the carriage bolt goes in the square of the retainer. We include washers, especially if you have the adjusting one that makes a difference. All grade 8 hardware, the, bolt, the carriage bolts are not, but... The hardware is grade 8. Just get these finger tight. This goes through the adjuster first on this side. Then through, make sure the squares line up again. Again, just finger tight here. And you can move this to adjust your chain when we get to that point. Now we're going to use our in-house bolt shaft shaft. The 19 tooth sprocket. This is the upgraded sprocket for faster speed, better throwing but takes more horsepower, just keep that in mind. Always lube this up a little bit for easy install, but also to keep corrosion away. So next time you need to remove this, it's not frozen in there. Now we're gonna set this up on this side. Again, you're gonna sandwich your, your bearing in these. And then this is going to go on here. These allow you to kind of like self-align the bearings. 
that's why we don't tighten anything up yet and then this is your lock on here I'm going to loop this side up too for install and to keep corrosion away so uh, yours are probably like I said the finish is going to vary on colors and paint so just wanted to mention this I don't think we did in the video your bearings have holes in them like this this is so you can pump grease through a, a needle into the bearings and, and keep pumping uh, or keep relubing them if you want and then it comes out this channel and out of these holes and so when you get your bearings pump these full of grease they make a little needle adapter it's like almost like a hypo, hypodermic needle and then you can pump this full and you'll see the grease coming out of here and all you got to do is just open the clamshells up so you can get into them enough to repack uh, re, re pump them if you want this your clam halves your lock collar goes first like this your bearing with the long part sticking out goes like this then you get your lock collar on here so you leave everything a little bit loose don't lock this up yet because you have to move your shaft around but just you're gonna rest it on there so your shaft still moves and we're going to set this make sure your bearing is equally in between these clamshells put your hardware on the back flat washer lock washer nut and it's hand tight this can just sit here for now so now the shaft will move so it should at least don't have your lock collars on there too tight and the shaft will move in and out the alignment of your chain is going to be up to you each one's going to be a little individual depending on how straight everything is how worn everything is we provide the longer key here so your shaft stays protected and a little bit cleaner and it's easier to insert and take out instead of beating on here if this thing's all the way in there the set screws here and here another advantage of these keys is it gives you a nice uh, shear point so hopefully the keys would shear before anything else does and save some damage that's all you got to do now your key moves I still like to leave a little bit out there depending on if we're gonna need it for alignment back weld this on here but this stuff gets bent this gets bent the, the nice thing about having this is being able to adjust it in fact weld it'll be a simple tack weld that you can you can grind off pretty handy it's uh the, having the key shaft gives you the, all the flexibility of adjustment and, and whatnot the only thing the tack weld would do is if these set screws loosen up it's going to keep this sprocket from moving right to left that's the only thing you're, you're driving off the key that's a better way to drive it you're not driving off the weld so it'd be just a simple tack weld and that's what we suggest you do into the pulley in this where the oem one is welded completely around it's relying on the weld to drive this We also made these shafts slightly large, uh, longer. That the same reason, so you have adjustability. So it, you might notice it'll stick out a little bit longer than your other one did. Some do, some don't. Um, but you're not going to catch because your skid shoes stick out further than the shaft does. And again, this is going to give us adjustability to move the pulley as well. Another uh, tip when you're roughly installing this to get you started: the center of the sprocket. Get roughly an inch and a half uh, they do very little bit we've seen some that have been close to, close to two inches some that have been closer to one and a quarter um, but inch and a half is a good starting point and again just eyeball your two sprockets line them up and that's a nice thing with this key setup you can slide it back and forth for adjustment these do get bent they do get fatigued this can get fe uh, bent your bearings where the auger sits can get, get bent or if your bearings are wearing so everything's just a good starting point um, if you had a brand new machine, it'd be a different story, but there is some room for error here. So now we're going to want to install the chain. So the chain and bearing kit, we're not going to do the augers. We already the auger uh, done in a video, a separate video, but this is the chain. We talk about why we don't use stainless in our videos. 
I'm just using the chain right now to line up the sprocket and the pulley. So there's different ways to install this. Everybody's got a different trick. Now, right now, the only thing we're really just doing is aligning. You want to look at it from front, from back, to try to see where you want the sprocket. Take full advantage of the adjustability. So just look at it from the back, from the front. Your biggest thing is you want to make sure the chain is not going to hit anything right to left. And also, you need to have good auger bearings. For this work because if your auger is walking then it's not going to matter <laughs> so you probably can't see real well down in there on this but you want to get it lined up as straight as possible once you get it where you want just make sure your keys set in there tighten up your set screws tighten them up good with the allen key or a, or a wrench socket these T handles do decent, but they're not enough. Get your key set screw on there. And at this point, once you got it where you want it, I would just recommend don't tack anywhere near your key. Just put one tack weld, just in case your set screws loosen up. It's going to keep this pulley from walking. And then you can always change this down the road in by taking a simple tack weld off if you have a, have a, a welder. If you don't have a welder, this will last a long time. You probably won't ever have any problems. Um, but just I would check these, you know, every season just to make sure they stay tight for you. If you got a welder, put a tack on there. If you don't, you'll be fine. Just make sure your set screws are tight. Sometimes you can run two in here and double them up. And that also works too because your top set screw keeps the bottom one locked in. And it also helps keep garbage and moisture out of here too by doubling them up. All right, now we're going to... I figured it was easier to show you guys on the bench how these bearings and locks work in case you don't know. It's the same as basically any, any other one. If you notice, these are off center and that's how these locks work. These are off center too. So when they meet, they're going to lock up. So you slide this on first, make sure you set screws out. Slide your bearing on. And right now, everything moves. Now you just take this and you'll turn it and you'll feel it grab a little bit. And what these notches here are for, not the set screw notch, but this notch, is so you tighten it and loosen it. So if you got pressure on the side of the bearing, or if your clamshells are together here, like this, get these tight. And then you're just going to take this and give it a little... Tap clockwise, that's going to tighten it. You see that? And now, this bearing doesn't move off the shaft. Then you're going to go ahead and tighten up these set screws. These ones on here, they don't need to be very tight at all. All it's doing is basically just keeping that collar uh, locked in position. Your metal to metal, and unfortunately the quality of these set screws is, is not ideal. That's kind of what we got. It's just today's world. So you just, just snug it up a little bit. That's all you got to do. Because all your load and everything's on the bearing itself. This lock locks everything in place anyway. So the set screw is kind of like a backup. And then to take it off, obviously you're going to loosen your set screw out. And then you would just take this and hit it counterclockwise. And off it goes. And then now you're free. The other thing is make sure you get these on straight. You don't want this crooked because it should fall on and then turn. You don't want it to go, it shouldn't go hard on. It should drop on. If it's not, just rotate it like that. You see that? It's a little harder. Find where it's happy, the two wider spots, and then rotate it. And then these actually clamp, this is not flat surface. 
it's convex and these are concave and that's what actually holds this outer race in place are these bearing retainers clamshells flangettes whatever you want to call them so that's actually keeping the bearing from moving too so all this set screw here is doing is basically just locking this collar in place that way it doesn't back off you just don't put a lot of force on it you don't need to and you'll be fine got our pulley on here so this is the pulley we provide in our kit it's heavier than the, the stamped tin one that the OEM and it's cheaper and it's heavier and it helps with momentum this whole setup is heavier than the OEM one and, and you get a little bit more momentum which will help you blow snow it takes a little bit more power to start but the uh, momentum will help carry you at such a high rpm so depending on what, what blower we're working on if it's for a 200 400 series or 3000 4000 is going to depend where your pulley lines up on this shaft you'll notice this hole on here this has got nothing to do with the case Ingersoll's. Ingersoll was making snow blowers for Kubota, for Aaron's, for Massey Ferguson. And that's what that's there for drive shaft on the other side. When you set this pulley up, you're going to want to line it with your mule drive a little bit by eye. I'm going to give you measurements as well. If you're using an OEM jack shaft kit, this is how the pulleys go. This, pay attention to the hub and the roll pins on the outside for your 3 and 4000 series like this in the photo. For your 200 and 400 series, the hub and roll pin is on the inside for your 200 and 400. Again, make sure this is coated. Easier install and to keep corrosion off it. So, put your pulley in there. Make sure your keyways are lined up. Again, another benefit we like to our kit is that this pulley is adjustable. Because not after 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, things get worn they get tweaked they get twisted and uh, having some adjustability to realign things uh, makes life a lot easier now on the 400 series all, 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 all of them are measuring from this left bracket and the 400 and the 200 series you're going to have a measurement in here of somewhere between four and three quarters and five and an eighth on average most of them if you set the center of the pulley to five inches off the side that that's where most of these older ones were set and they seem to work really well again you can adjust it for whatever works good for you okay and the other thing is this pulley if it needs to move we can do it once it's on the tractor you're not going to know until it's on the tractor and running so if you look straight on it's basically split between these two pulleys that's kind of what you want it's a little bit more towards the drive pulley and that's what it what should be the v's keep the belt in in line if it's too far over here you this way you're going to start rubbing sideways on that pulley as you go on to here um so try it like i said usually five inches is a good spot to start here with dead center of the pulley from the side here and uh try it out see how it works if you need to adjust this that's the beauty of our system being keyed you can slide it instead of uh, with our oem is you're stuck with where it is and you can't adjust for any wear or any tweaks any age another uh trick to, to get a rough idea if you know where your pulley is on the 200 and 400 series this pulley edge of it basically rides in the center of the flat this one might be off to the right a little bit um you can tweak them I, th I think I'm going to leave it. It'll be fine. If there's any issue, then I'll just move it out. But basically, this part of the edge of the pulley is basically in line with the center. That's how you know this pulley is right to left where it needs to be. If this is rubbing, you're too far this way. If this side's rubbing, you're going to be pushing too far this way. Unless something's tweaked and you need to be that far, then you can be. But a good starting point is getting this edge of this pulley basically dead center on a 200 and 400. On your 3000 and 4000 series, this is how you, you get a good starting point to where this pulley needs to be. You're basically riding center to center inside each other. And then if you need to tweak it, you can, but that's a good starting point. There's a bit, kind of a big variance on all the ones we've measured, new, used. So again, this is three inches is kind of a, a good starting point. Center of the pulley from the left mount bracket. Um, but say two and three quarters to three and a quarter is, is kind of what we've been seeing but a lot of them are two and seven eighths to three is is more of a, a common measurement but we do see some fairly shorter and some in further again 
you're gonna you can adjust it if things get tweaked if they get bent if things are worn if your blower gets tweaked or worn your mounts on your mule drive on your tractor allow this to move right and left or not all the way up and down so being able to slide this pulley helps you a lot especially if you're throwing brand new belts and, and you've done a lot of stuff to your tractor chances are there's pivot pins worn there's play somewhere so three is a good to start on your three thousand four thousand three inches from the left side and then your two pulleys if you look at them with this flipped all the way back and this bar out of the way you can see your drive pulley to the to the other v pulley sits center to center those are good starting points make sure the key is in there again a little bit sticks out we got a longer key so when you're when you're servicing this you got room to hit the key instead of the pulley and then when you get your mule drive on here you don't have to take the mule drive off but we recommend doing our mule drive refresh uh, kit with the new pivot uh, bushings and the pulleys and it also makes getting things in and out and working here better and then obviously for the video it's better so set this where you think it should be and then we adjust it once the mule drives back on and the belts on and you can see how things are and make sure the belt's not walking and it's staying on if you're throwing a belt the nice thing with this kit is you can adjust it to try to straighten out and have less chance of throwing a belt oh, we'll set the set screw again get in here and do it tight it doesn't hurt to put another set screw in here to protect the threads and to keep this one from backing out and then once you get this set where you want we also recommend just a tack weld if you want you don't have to but if you got a welder just tack weld on the back side not the front so you tack weld on the front you're never going to get this off same thing with this just the back side just a just a slight tack in case these screws back out it just keeps this pulley in line you're still always driving off this key not the weld if you don't have a tack weld if you don't have a welder don't worry about it it'll be fine again double key is always a good option or double screw is always a good option if you want so now we've got this on here go ahead and now these are gonna tighten up and then help recenter everything when you tighten these up just make sure your squares are going through the square end of the clamshells i don't think it really matters which way you go through with these bolts the ones that came off went the other way so i'm just going to put them back on that way this is cut square your bearing uh flangettes are square so you can go either way there's not a clearance issue but since it came off and it's easier to get to this way get to the nuts with multiple options for tools i'm going to put them on the way they came off so again this is set for a 200 400 with the pulley five inches from the left side of the blower mounting bracket we're going to tighten these flangettes clamshells retainers whatever you want to call them we're going to tighten them so make sure everything kind of feels like it's centered it's sitting in there and then what i like to do is tighten these even instead of socking one side up or the other just go back and forth a little bit make sure your square is carriage bolt sitting in the square you see how they pull we're going to provide smaller washers this is just what i happen to grab the smaller washers will fit here at center better but i just prefer for having a washer for a larger clamping force on these and then on this outside it makes a difference for sliding in here this outside one the bottom one i'm just going to snug up a little bit Yep, just so we can still move this. And then now we're gonna set up our chain. Feed it over the top of the sprocket in the back. Work it around. Just keep touching on it and then you'll work it back through the front. And then when you do this, you want to make sure there's no kinks in it. Make sure the top or the bottom, however you're doing it, is tight. And then pull the other side tight, as tight as you can. They should line up like that. Your chain might not uh, line right up like that. You may have to use the half link, depending on your sprocket wear, your adjustment system on your uh, blower, uh, what style it has, and also your sprocket count on your teeth. So uh, you may have to use the half link. The nice thing about the half link is, is you can always pop it off when your chain stretches and you don't have to remove a link until you get really stretched. But at that point, it's time to replace the chain. Now, what you're going to want to do is get the link where you got the most room, which is here. 
So all you gotta do is just, if it's not lined up where you want it, take it off there and then just rotate your auger and then you can put it back on. If you start it where you want it, it makes life a lot easier, but I didn't. So we're improvising. Again, you keep tension on the one side and then pull on the other, make sure there's no kinks, there's no bend, everything's tight. So depending on the style of your blower, if you go into our auger bearing placement, it'll show you a couple different styles. Some of them, this auger actually is on a cam, different holes in the plates on the side, and you move the auger closer or further back for your chain adjustment. These newer ones, it has a screw we were talking about. Uh, there's some other setups people have done too. So right now, the chain's right length. You do have the option of adding a half link if you need to, or if you need to remove a link down the road and then put a half link in. Now, it's all set up there. If you come back here, you're gonna make sure you take your shaft and your adjuster and you pull it back a little bit make sure you're not make sure you're not bottomed out here so this means we have some adjustment still in this if this if that makes sense so this is going to be allowed to come back here and then you have this much adjustment so the new chain is is up there pull it back all right i think we'll be absolutely fine just putting the regular connecting link in there's different styles of these adjust uh, these uh, connector links and the retaining systems. Usually, if you just pry on these, they come off. And onto the ground. Your end piece, your connector link. Now, even though it's tight, I like to go through the back. That way, you got room to work on this to get it off. But if you use a pair of pliers to get in here, it can make it work. You get one side started. So there we go. You need to push it all the way through. Important, you can't forget this link, or this plate, I should say. It goes up in there. And then this you can do with a pair of pliers. Kind of gonna be hard to see. You can do it by hand sometimes or a screwdriver. Not a lot of room, that's why it's much easier to work in here. Sometimes pliers, sometimes screwdrivers for this style. Again, you just want to keep pressure on the on the retainer going in towards the chain as you're pushing this up. There you go. She went in. Let's make sure it's set in these grooves. These links have grooves for this retainer to sit in. If it's not in there, it's gonna come flying off. And as we talked about, this has got movement. Depending on your style, we're gonna use this chain adjuster. Now really, I like to put washers behind here. But I'm not liking how rusty this is and it's the end of that's kind of buggered. I don't wanna wreck that piece. So we're just gonna roll with this. And you'll notice as I tighten this up, it's gonna pull this back. And that's where we're gonna get attention from. You come over here, I'll show you. You don't want the chain too tight and obviously you don't want it too loose. What's too loose? Well, too loose is that this is slapping and hitting here or hitting anywhere for a matter of fact. Um, and too tight is if you got no deflection. This is a brand new chain, so it is gonna wear in. Uh, all chains wear right away to a point and then they kind of stop wearing and it slows way down. So this will stretch and wear a little bit. I'm going to say that's probably a good starting spot. You have a little bit of deflection there, but not a lot. And then after, you know, maybe two, three hours of use, come back and check it. And if you have to readjust it, readjust it. But I'm going to go with that. Obviously do a full rotation. Make sure everything looks good, sounds good. It's in alignment. It's quiet. It's smooth. If you can watch your chain rockets lining up and working together. Everything looks like and feels like it's aligned good for you perfect for you then tighten your nuts up If not, then you have the ability to loosen these set screws up and move either the sprocket or the shaft You can loosen these bearing collars up Keep the sprocket on here and move your shaft in and out. That's just a lot of play um, So it's up to you But usually it's just easy to loosen this set screw up and move this back and forth if you need to move it a little bit 
same for the pulley. So I'm going to tighten this up where it is. And the jack shaft's complete. So the wheel drive rebuild kit's installed, the new jack shaft kit's installed, and the um, new chain is installed. We didn't do the auger bearings on the floor yet, that's in a different video that we already did on a different blower. Uh, I just wanted to get this thing on here so you guys can see how the jack shaft and the, the wheel drive pulleys go. These auger bearings are a little loud, but they're not horrible. I've heard much worse, but I'm going to show you. Uh, this is on a 226, obviously we're not pushing any snow. I might try it on a 226 with a 19 2 sprocket. Uh, I'm curious to see how the uh, 16 Onan handles it. Uh, I know the 16 Briggs in deep snow, wet snow, they work quite a bit. That's why they recommend a 18 horse minimum on this 48 inch with the 19 tooth. The 16 horse with the 38 inch tooth, we recommend you can go. Um, the 16 horse with the 38 inch floor, you can run with a 19 tooth. We just may have to slow down a little bit. And again, we're going to just, just basically a jack shaft video showing you how that works and that our uh, rebuild kit for the idle uh, mule drive system. Check out our videos of these in action. Uh, the 16-2 sprockets work great as well. Uh, the 19-2 is just a nice upgrade if you got the horsepower and you feel you need it. Remember, man built it, man can fix it. We have a bunch of rebuild kits for the snow blowers, for our mowers, from complete rebuild kits to different sections of each uh, attachment. We put kits together to make it easy for you guys to order, to save you a little bit of money, and to make your job complete. Plug and play all in one pack. You don't have to spend all night trying to search for the right part numbers, making sure you didn't get the wrong ones. And it all arrives to you quickly, and you can just do your job completely. Thank you. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. Check out all our, our snowblower kits and all the parts we offer and custom kits at ksingersalltractors.com. We've got a lot of information and pictures there as well for our Ingersoll brand. And thanks so much for watching. See you the next time.